The 20 people you're looking at on screen are responsible for some of 2023's worst true crime cases. Stay tuned for a deep dive into this year's most heinous crimes, convictions, and sentencings. This brings us to our first case, the Uber Eats Killer. This story is from Pasco County in Florida, April 19th, 2023. It all started when Randall Cook, a 59-year-old delivery driver for Uber Eats and DoorDash, was making his final deliveries of the day. Excited about yet another successful day at work, he texted his wife and informed her about his arrival. But who knew that this would be his last text? His wife waited for him to come home, but there was no response. With more hours passing and more unanswered texts, she finally reported him missing. That's when the law enforcement agencies started tracking his whereabouts. After two days, the police finally found the location where Cook made his final delivery. With the help of the main suspect's roommate, they got access to the home surveillance video. It showed two unknown individuals carrying trash bags. Upon further investigation, the police found Cook's car parked near the home. It had been moved after he was killed. Deputies found the same trash bags in the car that were seen in the surveillance video. The car also had a red delivery bag and blood-soaked paper towels in it giving more clues to the police. Soon, the dots connected, and a man named Oscar Solis was arrested for felony murder in conjunction with robbery. The victim's wedding ring and car keys were inside Solis's house, and that's what led detectives to Solis. Solis was a reputed Mara Salvatruta, or MS-13 gang member, and a parolee. He was found to be involved in this demonic stabbing, where he stabbed Cook 35 times and dismembered his remains. He always had a violent history. Later, Cook's dismembered remains were found on the property as well. He is sentenced to pay for his atrocious deeds. Prosecutors want the death penalty for Solis, who is now haunted by the consequences of his actions, while the victim's family seeks Solis and the justice served. Cook was said to be a fun-loving man who was a stepdad to two daughters and a father to three children. The community was left in shock and disbelief, forever scarred by the demonic acts committed by Oscar Solis. Number two, killing of the Haight family. This case is surely one of the most gruesome and upsetting murders that you'll come across. A case that involves familial homicide that took place in Enoch, Utah. 42-year-old Michael Haight, who was under investigation for domestic violence, committed a mass shooting in his home that left eight members of his own family dead. The night before the tragic incident, Michael Haight shared moments of laughter with his children and promised to take them sledding the following day. Who knew how tragically the events would unfold the next day? Five kids and three adults were among the victims who were shot dead. The suicide note written by Michael Haight read, this is nonsense and I can't handle it for one more day. We will not be a burden on society. I kept asking for help and you wouldn't listen. At 4 p.m. on January 4th, 2023, when police went to the family home for a welfare check, they found eight family members dead from gunshot wounds. This incident happened two weeks after his wife started the divorce proceedings. Prior to the killings, Macy Haight, the eldest daughter, had contacted the Enoch Police Department to report domestic abuse. She described specific incidences of abuse and voiced concern that her father's assault would get worse and result in her death. However, the investigating officer did not discover enough proof to prosecute criminal charges. And Tasha Haight, Haight's wife, did not think that bringing charges was required. Michael Haight was identified by authorities as the person who was responsible for these shootings. Authorities came to the conclusion that Haight was the offender and that he shot himself in the head after killing his family. According to the reports, Tasha told her family that the house had been cleared of all guns before the incident, despite the fact that the adults had received personal protection and weapon safety training. This left the victims defenseless. Following the incident, the victims' families issued a statement expressing their sorrow and urged people to seek solace and faith. The victims were laid to rest in the United Service, but Michael's name was not mentioned, and he was given a private funeral. Tasha and Gail's family later issued a statement expressing their lack of resentment toward the Haight family, despite the tragic occurrences. Number three, the case of Alexis Sabarit. In May of 2023, Alexis Sabrit was found guilty of beheading his girlfriend in front of several witnesses. On July 28, 2021, at the intersection of 4th Avenue and Spencer Street in Shakopee, Minnesota, 
this horrifying incident took place. Now, we usually see such inhumane acts in movies, but this was very much real. A witness immediately dialed 911 after seeing a man throw a decapitated body out of his car. This man was later identified as Alexis Sabri, 44 years old, who beheaded his girlfriend, America Thayer, a 56-year-old woman. When police arrived at the site at 2.30 p.m., they discovered Thayer's lifeless body next to the car, along with her head chopped off. Sabri was discovered to have attacked Thayer with an eight-pound dumbbell when they were inside a car near downtown Shakopee during the subsequent investigation. He then decapitated her with a machete in a horrible manner. Surprisingly, multiple witnesses, including those in nearby vehicles and homes, witnessed the brutal attack. One of them even recorded Sabri pulling out Thayer's corpse out of the car into the pavement and then lifting her head by her hair. Sabri and Thayer were on their way to his court hearing for felony charges linked to an earlier incident. During a struggle with the cops, Sabrit allegedly set fire to their apartment. Thayer apparently voiced her wish to end their relationship, which led to Sabrit's brutal assault on her. Soon after committing this crime, he departed the site, disposing of the murder weapon, the machete, along the way. Law authorities located Sabrit and arrested him about 12 miles away, near the Travel Lodge Hotel where he was staying. Due to the gravity of his conduct, Alexis Sabri was indicted on first-degree murder charges after initially being charged with intentional second-degree murder. Surprisingly, in January 2023, he waived his rights to a jury trial, allowing the judge to decide his fate. On May 11th of this year, the judge issued a verdict supported by comprehensive factual finding that emphasized Sabarit's strategic decision-making during the attack and his choice of weapon. Despite his defense claiming mental health issues, the judge denied this allegation, emphasizing that Sabarit's deliberate weapon selection and subsequent attempts to escape capture. County attorney Ron Hossevar expressed satisfaction with the conviction, predicting that Sabarit would get a life sentence without the possibility of parole. Sabarit has since been found guilty. Number four, the fatal road rage. In 2023, Lanisha Marie McQuinn was sentenced to 35 years in prison. What began as a routine day quickly transformed into a tragic story of anger and violence. It looked like an ordinary afternoon on a peaceful street in Halton City. Less than half a mile away on Hunter Drive at around 4 p.m., witnesses reported that the driver of a white Fiat and a passenger in a silver Chevy SUV found themselves entangled in a heated dispute. Witnesses claimed that in those moments, the driver of the Fiat hurled a metallic object toward the SUV. This act, unfortunately, proved to have serious repercussions. The passenger in the SUV, later identified as Lanisha Marie McQuinn, 30, responded to this act of aggression with an unthinkable act of her own. She pulled out a handgun and fired on the white Fiat, finding its target in the form of Claudia Sanchez, an innocent bystander sitting in the passenger seat of the Fiat. When the argument began, Sanchez, 33, was traveling with her friend. Following the gunshot, the driver flew several blocks before calling the cops. Police arrived at the scene, finding Claudia Sanchez shot in the head and was fighting for her life. She was quickly treated on the scene and eventually rushed to the nearby John Peter Smith Hospital. Sadly, she couldn't bear the injuries and died the following day. McQuinn was initially arrested and charged with aggravated assault and possible manslaughter. It was also confirmed that the driver would face charges. Sergeant Peters, the lead investigator, stated, don't ever get into a confrontation with somebody. Just drive to the police department, the parking lot, call 911, and let us know about it. The victim's family wanted to see McQuinn charged following the death. An innocent person, mother of three, a sister, a daughter, she's gone and we can't get her back, stated Sanchez's brother. Earlier in 2023, McQuinn faced the consequences of her actions and was found guilty of murder and sentenced to 35 years. These were the words of her brother upon hearing the conviction. It doesn't bring my sister back, but man, it sure does feel good to know that justice was served. McQuinn's momentary lapse of judgment destroyed two lives, the victims and her own. This case is a stark reminder of why choosing compassion and patience over anger is essential. Number five, 2023 Hamburg shooting. This is a case that involves a mass shooting that occurred at a Kingdom Hall of Jehovah Witnesses in Hamburg, Germany. This horrific incident happened outside of the Kingdom Hall on Dielbug Street 
on the evening of March 9th, 2023. A gunman wielding a Heckler & Koch P30 semi-automatic weapon opened fire on a woman sitting in her car. She miraculously managed to escape unharmed. The intruder then unleashed a volley of gunfire, blasting 10 more shots through a hall window before forcing his way inside. This horrifying event occurred at a service at the church, with 36 people physically present and others participating online. A neighbor managed to record the gunman entering the building through a window, followed by the horrific sound of gunfire. The shooter then exited from the courtyard, firing more shots through a first floor window. During the firing, the lights in the hall were quickly turned off, heightening the sense of terror and bewilderment about what was happening inside. The police were quickly alerted by emergency calls and they arrived on site at 9.08 p.m. At 9.09 p.m., they forced their way into the three-story building where they encountered the assailant. The tense chase began as the officers pursued the gunman upstairs where he tragically committed suicide and shot himself dead. Four men and two women, ranging in age from 33 to 60, were tragically killed, as was an unborn baby. Eight people were hurt, with four of them in critical condition. Subsequent investigations revealed the identity of the shooter, Philip Fuse, a 35-year-old single man. Fuse described himself as a business consultant, raised in a strict evangelical household in Kempton, Bavaria. He was a former member of the Jehovah Witnesses, but did not have a criminal record and was not known as an extremist. Surprisingly, Fuse had a gun license and was allowed to keep his P-30 handgun. After the incident, police received an anonymous letter in January 2023 expressing worry about Fuse's potential hostility toward religious groups, specifically Jehovah Witnesses, as well as his former job. Nonetheless, the precise reason for this horrible crime remains unknown. Number six, life sentence for teen killer. It's one of those cases that will never go away. May 9th, 2021 will forever be etched in my mind. Sheriff Rod Hardwick. Tristan Bailey, 13, was a vibrant cheerleader, a beloved daughter, and a person known to be full of life. Unfortunately, her life was cut short on a fateful Mother's Day, May 9th. She was reported missing by her family, and tragically, her lifeless body was discovered just hours later. The perpetrator of this heinous crime was Aiden Fucci, a 14-year-old student who attended the same school as Tristan. Friends and acquaintances would later reveal a chilling side to Fucci. He often talked about killing people, even expressing his intent to drag a random person into the woods and stab them. Fucci requested Tristan's number on that fateful night and convinced her to leave her home. Security footage captured the two walking toward a retention pond, but only Fuchi returned, carrying his shoes. An autopsy later revealed the horrifying extent of Tristan's injuries, with 114 stab and cutting wounds, including 50 defensive wounds, indicating a desperate struggle for her life. During the initial phase of the trial, Fuchi provided conflicting stories to investigators, but eventually admitted to being with Tristan. He also said they got into an argument, later confessing to pushing her, causing her to fall and strike her head. Initially, Fuchi was charged with second degree murder, but the brutality of the crime led the charges to being upgraded to first degree murder. There was an overwhelming amount of evidence against Fuchi, a Snapchat message showing him in the backseat of a patrol car raised suspicions. The discovery of a buck knife in the pond near Tristan's body, matching a fragment lodged in her scalp, and identified as Fuchi's, further implicated him. A lot of testimonies from friends mentioned violent drawings, and police also found his bloody wet clothes. In a dramatic turn of events, just before jury selection, Fuchi changed his plea to guilty. On March 24, 2023, Judge R. Lee Smith handed down a life sentence, emphasizing the horrifying nature of Tristan Bailey's death. We are very appreciative of this outcome and felt that this is the right verdict, considering how heinous the crime is and Aiden's behavior around it, said Tristan's family upon hearing the outcome. This disturbing case is a haunting reminder that evil can exist anywhere, even among seemingly ordinary people. Number seven, immorality of an inmate. Her unborn child no longer had a heartbeat. This result was deduced after a victim was rushed to the trauma center for immediate treatment, where an ultrasound revealed the devastating outcome. The heart-wrenching tragedy exposed the depths of a kill's capacity for violence. On the 12th of April, 2023, a woman named Sherry Aziza Akil 
who had been restrained due to suicidal tendencies, committed a senseless act of violence at John Peter Smith Hospital. She was brought to the hospital from jail as they feared she might hurt herself. While a pregnant medical worker stood next to her bed, a kill unleashed a brutal punch to the victim's stomach. She is now being accused of murder as an ultrasound determined that the unborn child no longer had a pulse. Court records also unveiled a troubling history for a kill. Previous arrests for driving under the influence, intent to operate an illicit game room, and assault causing bodily injury shed light on her troubled past. The escalating nature of her offenses also raised concerns about her state of mind. After the incident, the hospital staff immediately restrained her, but unfortunately, the damage had been done. Sherry Akil remained in a secure hospital area until she was booked into the Tarrant County Jail. Her actions have shattered lives and led to a murder charge that carries grave consequences. Our thoughts go out to the mother and her family, who must cope with unimaginable loss of precious life. Number 8. Trial of a Sick Virginia Mother This case involving Veronica Youngblood will certainly send shivers down your spine. She was found guilty of the following crimes in March of 2023. Veronica, 37, a mother of two, committed an unheard of act against her own children. She drugged her two daughters before shooting them in their beds. The horrifying incident took place on August 5, 2018, at their home in McLean, Virginia. Five-year-old Brooklyn Youngblood tragically lost her life instantly after being shot in the head, while 15-year-old Sharon Castro, shot in the back and chest, barely fought for her survival. When the police reached the house, the eldest child was still alive. During the trial, the jury listened to a heart-wrenching recording of Sharon struggling to breathe and pleading not to die. She, Sharon, said her mom came into the room and said, I am gonna take you to see God, and then shot her, Ryan Fisher, patrol police officer. Despite Sharon's courageous efforts, she tragically succumbed to her injuries just a few days later in the hospital. The motive behind this horrifying crime stemmed from a bitter custody battle between Veronica Youngblood and her ex-husband, Ronald Youngblood. Ronald had recently won the case, gaining custody of Veronica's youngest daughter, Brooklyn, and planned to move her to Missouri. Veronica Youngblood pleaded not guilty because of insanity, claiming mental illness played a role in her actions. However, the jury rejected these claims, viewing her crime as a sick desire for revenge. They also dismissed her defense team's arguments that her troubled upbringing, marked by physical and sexual abuse, contributed to her mental state. Following a two-week trial in 2023, Veronica Youngblood was convicted of two counts of first-degree murder and two counts of using a firearm to commit murder. The jury determined her sentence to be 78 years in prison, with 36 years for each murder charge and three years for each firearm offense. Number nine, Victoria Nassi Rover gets 21 years for trying to kill her doppelganger with poison cheesecake. A sinister plot unfolded in the dark corners of Brooklyn, casting a veil of terror over the unsuspecting streets. This is the chilling tale of Victoria Nassi Rover, a name that would soon become synonymous with deception and evil. On that fateful day, April 20th, 2023, Queen's Supreme Court Justice Kenneth Holder delivered a verdict that would shake the very foundations of justice. He sentenced Victoria Nassi Rover to a staggering 21 years behind bars for a heinous crime that would send shivers down anyone's spine. In 2016, Nassie Rover devised an evil plan to steal an identity. She targeted a beautician who looked like her and used a poison cheesecake to try to end her life. The unsuspecting stylist, Olga Tasevic, fell into her trap. During the trial, the jury's verdict cast a dark cloud over Nassie Rover's fate. With a mix of anger and dread, Judge Holder deemed her an extremely dangerous woman, struggling to comprehend the horrors she had inflicted on her victim. Behind cold, steel bars, Nasi Rover's malevolent nature could not be contained. Her venomous rage burned within her, even in the face of justice. As the judge's words echoed in her mind, her contempt overflowed. Fuck you, she spat, her words dripping with disdain, a chilling reminder of her defiance. Using a rare poison from Russia, Nasi Rover brought a tainted dessert to Tasvik's home. Within 20 minutes, Tasvik's world turned into a nightmare fighting for her life as darkness engulfed her. In the morning light, a horrifying sight emerged. Tasvik lay unconscious, hills scattered, 
Nasi Rover's desperate ploy for escape unveiled, but her sinister web crumbled, leaving behind only devastation. The courtroom, a stage for justice, bore witness to Nasi Rover's unraveling. The charges lay bare, her malevolence, attempted murder, assault, unlawful imprisonment, and petty larceny. As the gavel fell, sealing Nasi Rover's fate, the shadows of her crimes linger, haunting the streets of Brooklyn. The tale of her wickedness serves as a chilling reminder of the horrors lurking beneath the surface of our seemingly ordinary lives. Number 10, 2023 Allen, Texas Outlet Mall Shooting. This next case involves a mass shooting in an outlet center in Allen, Texas. What's more shocking is that the perpetrator had licensed guns with him. This horrible incident took place on May 6, 2023 at the Allen Premium Outlets Mall when a shooter, later identified as 33-year-old Mauricio Martinez Garcia, launched a savage assault. Garcia exited a silver car wearing all black tactical gear and started firing into the gathering outside the mall. Witnesses described the chaotic scene and how the shooter used an AR-15 style rifle to fire indiscriminately at people, cars, and stores. The shooting began at almost 3.36 p.m. Garcia had injured 15 people in a matter of minutes. Unsettlingly, it was found that he owned a total of eight firearms, all of which were legally acquired. On performing some background checks, Garcia's ties to far-right extremism were revealed. His online writings demonstrated his self-radicalization, endorsing white nationalists, neo-Nazis, and insul ideas even while his precise motivation for the rampage remained unknown. He made crude posts about women, Jews, and racial minorities, which displayed a seriously unsettling mentality. Garcia wore a tactical vest with an embroidered RWDS, Right Wing Death Squad patch, and had fascist symbols tattooed on his body. At 3.40 p.m., the Allen Police Department received a call about the incident. Law enforcement quickly arrived on the scene, Luckily, an officer was already there for an unrelated call. After hearing gunshots, this cop bravely went up to the shooter and eventually engaged Garcia and then shot him dead, putting an end to Garcia's murderous rampage. During the examination that followed, three guns were found on Garcia's body and five more were found in his car. Surprisingly, he had bought all eight weapons legally. Tragically, nine lives were lost in the mall shooting, including Garcia's. Seven more people were hurt, three of whom were in serious condition. The brutal act of violence that took place that day was horrible, and the topic of gun restriction has been the subject of heated discussions. The mall was shut down for more than three weeks and was later reopened on May 31st. Number 11, Donna Macho. 2023 DNA testing, solved cold case. Prepare yourself for a chilling story that defies time itself. Authorities have uncovered a shocking truth hidden for decades. In 1984, Donna Macho, a young woman of 19, vanished from her family home in New Jersey. The case remained unsolved for decades until a breakthrough finally came in 2023. The investigators re-examined the evidence, determined to crack the long forgotten mystery. And then a revelation emerged. DNA evidence pointed to Nathaniel Harvey, who had died in prison years ago. Harvey, known for his dark past, had been a potential suspect from the start, but leads dissipated and the case went cold, leaving the truth buried in the shadows. Well, with advancements in DNA technology, the pieces of the puzzle fell into place. Harvey's DNA was found in Donna Macho's bedroom, despite no other logical explanation for its presence. The truth became undeniable. Harvey had a horrifying pattern of breaking into unlocked homes where he held captive and assaulted young women. Donna Macho had tragically fallen victim to his monstrous act. Years later, her skeletal remains were discovered in a secluded woodland area. The horror she endured silently echoed through the years, finally finding a voice in the evidence. Harvey, already serving time for another brutal crime, strongly maintained his innocence for three decades, but the damning evidence sealed his fate. Harvey's true nature met its match, locked away 
he awaited his day of reckoning. But justice would never be fully served because in November 2020, his death ended his twisted journey within the confines of the Southwood State Prison. Number 12, David A. Cow, sentenced to life. I would like to apologize to everybody, especially the Zimmerman family. I took away Brittany's 21-year-old life, family, that she could have had, David A. Cow. In the chilling silence of the courtroom, David Cow admitted his guilt. The weight of his actions hung heavily in the air. The horror of Zimmerman's stolen life demanded retribution. Over 14 years ago, a terrifying incident occurred in Brittany Zimmerman's downtown Madison apartment, leaving a lasting impact on her and those who knew her. On April 2, 2008, Zimmerman returned home from class, oblivious to the sinister presence awaiting her. Gripped by fear, she dialed 911, her voice trembling, realizing someone had followed her into her apartment. However, fate dealt her a cruel hand. The dispatcher failed to perceive the urgency, the unspoken desperation in Zimmerman's voice. She hung up, ignorant of the struggle that unfolded within those walls. David Cow, a person of interest, emerged from the shadows. His hostility had left a trace, an indelible mark in the form of his DNA discovered within the apartment. Witnesses spoke of his strange behavior, going door to door seeking money. But justice remained elusive, and the shadow of suspicion lingered. David had killed Brittany Zimmerman. March 2020 was the year when fate finally intervened. Cal, on the brink of freedom for a different crime, was about to face the long-awaited reckoning. The truth would find its voice. Judge Chris Taylor's voice, laced with cold determination, condemned Cal to a life sentence. The gavel fell, sealing his fate within the confines of a prison cell. Cal's hollow apology echoed through the courtroom, a twisted attempt to make amends, but the pain inflicted upon the Zimmerman family could never be healed. Trembling with suppressed rage, Zimmerman's aunt spoke on behalf of the shattered family. She unveiled Cal's true motives, exposing his self-serving crimes. Zimmerman's family took solace in Cal's life imprisonment without parole, vowing to fight and deny him freedom, and their lives were overshadowed by unending torment, while Cal had savored 15 years of liberty. David A. Cal was sentenced to life in prison in 2023. Number 13, Doppelganger Murder. A case where a woman murdered her doppelganger in an attempt to fake her own death. Now, this is something we don't hear about every other day. The woman was arrested in January of 2023. This tragic incident took place last August in Ingolstadt, Germany. Investigators have identified a 23-year-old beautician, Cher Ban K, as the alleged offender responsible for the death of Khadija O, oh, a 23-year-old beauty blogger in a horrific and horrible incident. Cher Ban, who is from Munich, reached out to Khadija through Instagram and lured her into a face-to-face -face meeting by offering a cosmetics kit. Sherban and her boyfriend, Shakir K, are thought to have picked up Khadija in their Mercedes in Hale Brand and fatally stabbed her somewhere between Hale Brand and Ingolstadt. Prosecutors claim that they subsequently drove to Ingolstadt and abandoned the vehicle after placing Khadija's deceased body in the back seat. The local newspapers at first misidentified the victim, falsely listing Sheraban as the deceased. However, post-mortem results later revealed that Khadija was the victim of this horrible murder. An in-depth investigation later revealed a disturbing pattern of Sheraban using various aliases to contact other women resembling her on Instagram in the weeks leading up to the murder. She tried to persuade them to meet her, suggesting of the terrifying prospect of additional victims. Sherban and Shukir were both caught and jailed on remand in August and charged with murder. Official arrest warrants were issued for them at the end of January of 2023, following a six-month inquiry. Although the investigations were still ongoing and additional witnesses need to be interrogated, a representative for the Ingolstadt Prosecutor's Office confirmed the arrest warrants were issued. If convicted, the two may face life in prison. According to police spokesperson Andreas Eichel, the murder weapon still hasn't been located, but the evidence against the accused is substantial. Khadija was stabbed approximately 50 times and had significant facial injuries, making this a particularly heinous crime. Given the drastic turn of events, 
Eichel remarked that the inquiry took great talents and was unexpected as the case's circumstances were exceedingly odd. The enormity of the heinous crime has shocked German society and left them in mourning for Khadija's young life. Number 14, the case of Lori Vallow Daybell. This horrifying case involves the murders of two children, as well as an alleged plan to murder their father's first wife. Lori Vallow Daybell, the 49-year-old Idaho mother, was convicted on all counts, including two counts of first-degree murder and three counts of conspiracy. The victims in this terrible story include 17-year-old Tylee Ryan and 7-year-old Joshua J.J. Vallow, as well as Tammy Daybell, the first wife of Lori's husband, Chad Daybell. Lori became known as the Doomsday Mom, a name that scared people who came across her. Everything began with her picture-perfect marriage to Charles Vallow, a businessman. Despite the impending storm, friends and family basked in their happiness. Tylee Ryan, Lori's daughter from a previous relationship, was lovingly raised by them until a sneaky change cast a sinister shadow over Lori's heart. Everything was going well. Those close to Lori noted an uncomfortable change in her relationship with her children in 2017. Whispers of her newfound interest in the Book of Doomsday authored Chad Daybell filled the air. Chad, a mysterious man who lived just outside of Ruxburg, had a grim reputation for his fictitious works about preparing for the end of the world. Lori, at that time, was quite invested in the author's words. The incident happened in September 2019, when Tylee and JJ vanished without a trace, sparking a nationwide hunt. Surprisingly, Lori appeared carefree during this time, and even married Chad Daybell on a beautiful Hawaiian beach. However, she was not aware that the truth would soon be revealed. The bodies of the two missing children were recovered nine months later in a pet cemetery on Daybell's property in Idaho. Lori Vallow was found guilty of first-degree murder, conspiracy to conduct first-degree murder, and grand theft in Ada County, Idaho. In the case of Tammy, her husband's first wife, she was also found guilty of conspiracy to commit first-degree murder. In a different case, Vallow is accused of planning to have her fourth husband, Charles Vallow, killed in Arizona with the help of her now-deceased brother, Alex Cox. The case of Lori and Charles were initially scheduled to go on trial together, but were ultimately divided. After only seven hours of deliberation and six weeks of intense testimony, the jury announced their decision. On May 12, 2023, Lori Vallow Daybell was found guilty of all criminal charges and is now serving her life in prison. Number 15, psychopath killer, jailed for at least 49 years. Brown is a dangerous individual who poses a significant threat to women. He preyed on the vulnerabilities of Leah and Alex and worked to build their trust, only to then exploit it for his own personal gain. Detective Chief Inspector Neil Kimber. The following story involves a 41-year-old man, Mark Brown, who is responsible for the disappearance of two sex workers. One of these disappearances ended in a heinous murder involving torching a woman's body in an oil drum. The victims, Leah Ware, 33, Alexandra Morgan, 34, were both mothers to young children and disappeared six months apart. Mark, a father of three, used to search for women on a sex work website called adultwork.com. While the whereabouts of Leah are still unknown to this day, Alexandra's remains were found on a building site where Brown had previously worked. Mark still denies his involvement in the disappearances and the murder of the two women. According to Brown, Alexandra died after suffering a catastrophic head injury after she slipped on some tools on the house floor. To cover up her death in his house, the only thing his evil mind could think of was burning her body in an old oil drum. He thought that no one would ever know about her existence. It was only after Alexandra's parents informed the authorities that the investigation started. They were alerted after she failed to pick up her sons. After great struggles, the investigators finally found the main clue that would lead them to the killer. A note written by Alexandra read the following. Check postcode TN345NY, Rock Lane, opposite Bartlett's. 
the location of the farm in Hastings. Upon reaching the building site in Seven Oaks in Kent, Alexandra's remains were finally found. This was the first time a connection was made to Mark Brown, since he had been carrying out the groundwork on a project in the same location. Mark, who was sentenced in 2023, preferred to stay in his prison cell and refused to attend court for his sentencing. He was adamant that he never murdered any of the women. In January of 2023, he was jailed for at least 49 years. According to him, Leah is still alive and well and has gone off far away to a better place with travelers. But camera footage tells a different story. He not only exploited her mental illness and loneliness, but also kept her locked up in an old shipping container. We hope that wherever she is, she is safe and happy. Number 16, Jung Yu Jung. In this case, a female murderer killed a young woman in her 20s just because she wanted to try murder. Yeah, you heard it right. The woman wanted to give murder a try. This shocking incident occurred in Busan, South Korea on the 26th of May, when a 23-year-old woman identified as Jung Yo Jung was accused of posing as a student and murdering her tutor out of curiosity. Jung allegedly signed up for a mobile app that connects parents with private tutors. She pretended to be the mother of a ninth grade kid and communicated online with a lady in her 20s who was offering English tutoring services. Jung arranged a meeting at the victim's home under the guise of organizing a consultation for her so-called daughter. On May 26, 2023, Jung visited the victim's house while wearing a school uniform she had ordered online. Once she was inside the apartment, she brutally stabbed the instructor using a knife and then dismembered her body. According to a Busan police official, Jung is short and with the uniform on, the victim possibly mistook her for a middle school student. The police believe that the crime was planned due to the enormous garbage bags and bleach that were used to try to cover up the murder. In an effort to give the impression that the tutor had vanished, Jung allegedly put some of the victim's body parts in a suitcase and gathered the victim's wallet, phone, and IDs. To dispose of the blood-stained bags, she then got a taxi to the banks of the Nakdong River. The cab driver became suspicious of Jung's actions and immediately called the police. As a result, the victim's body pieces were found at Jung's house in close to the river. After being detained, Jung allegedly confessed to the crime. She acknowledged that watching murder-related television shows and reading books fueled her desire to commit murder. According to a police spokesperson, Jung was found to have premeditated the crime, driven by a desire to kill someone after she became obsessed with murder from TV programs and books. They are currently testing Jung to see if she has psychopathic tendencies. On May 27, 2023, Jung was arrested and is now under police custody. Number 17, Tragedy of Belverde. Maximus was on the bed while Alexander was lying on the floor next to the bed. Inspector Oliver Stride. It was a day that will forever haunt the neighborhood of Belvedere, Southeast London. On the 9th of March, 2023, concerns were raised about the welfare of Nadia de Jagger and her sons, Alexander and Maximus. Police were forced to enter their home and discovered a scene of unimaginable tragedy. The post-mortem examinations revealed that both young boys had been strangled, their cause of death attributed to extreme compression to their neck, while their mother, Nadia's death, was determined to be by hanging. At Croydon Corners Court, an inquest into their death was opened and adjourned within five minutes, awaiting further investigation. The local community mourned the loss of Nadia and her two beloved sons. Their school described them as model pupils, best friends, with a genuine thirst for knowledge. The investigation, led by Detective Inspector Oliver Stride of the Metropolitan Police Specialist Crime Command remains ongoing. However, authorities have confirmed that they are not actively seeking other individuals concerning the case. The tragic deaths of Nadia de Jagger and her two young sons have sent shockwaves through the community, leaving friends, neighbors, and strangers grappling with grief and disbelief. Those who knew the family described them as normal, quiet and respectful. The horrific event has stunned everyone. As the investigation progresses, the community eagerly awaits answers. The procedure is expected to conclude within the next six months, at which point a decision will be made regarding the necessity of a full inquest. The investigation is ongoing 
and the authorities have not identified any other suspects other than the mother, Nadia de Jagger, who was found deceased alongside her children. Speculation and analysis at this stage would be purely conjecture. We can only hope that the ongoing investigation sheds light on this disturbing case, providing closure for all those affected. Number 18. False Accusation Tragedy Doesn't make sense. Convenience store owner chased down and murdered armed 14-year-old who did not shoplift anything, Sheriff says. Let's move on to South Carolina. Until June 2023, Rick Chow was not charged with the crime he had committed. He is now facing murder charges. Rick Chow shot this young man in the back and he killed him, and he is going to be appropriately charged with murder. Richmond County Sheriff Leon Lott. What looked like an ordinary evening turned into tragedy when Rick Chow, a gas station and convenience store owner, wrongly accused Cyrus of shoplifting. Believing that the 14-year-old had taken four water bottles, Chow confronted him. A verbal babbling ensued between Cyrus and Chow inside the Express Mart store. Fearing the confrontation was getting more serious, Cyrus ran away from the scene. Chow's son, standing nearby witnessing, decided to give a chase. Shockingly, armed with a pistol, Rick Chow joined the pursuit. As Cyrus ran, he fell, but quickly got back up and continued fleeing. At that moment, Chow's son falsely claimed that Cyrus was armed. Acting on this misinformation, Rick Chow aimed his gun at the unarmed teenager and fired a single shot, striking him in the back. The bullet traveled into Cyrus's heart, tragically taking his life. The Richland County Sheriff's Department swiftly launched an investigation, revealing no evidence supporting Chow's accusation of shoplifting or the need for lethal force. He added, Evidently, this is not an accidental shooting, but a deliberate and unjustifiable act of violence. Outrage and grief gripped the community as news of Cyrus's death spread. Rumors circulated on social media, suggesting that the victim was kneeling or had his hands up before he was shot. However, these claims were debunked by both the sheriff and the county coroner, who confirmed that Cyrus was running away when he was fatally shot. In the wake of the tragedy, peaceful protests were organized, demanding justice for Cyrus and an end to senseless violence. However, these demonstrations were marred by opportunistic individuals who engaged in looting and vandalism. The sheriff claimed that such actions further perpetuated the cycle of violence and were not what the grieving family desired. Rick Chow was swiftly arrested and charged with murder. During his court appearance, the magistrate stated that a bond could not be set for him under South Carolina law. The case will later proceed before a circuit court judge. While Chow possessed a concealed weapons permit, it became clear that his actions went beyond self-defense. Number 19, Belgrade School Shooting. This case involves a horrific school shooting that took place at Vladislav Ribnica Model Elementary School in Belgrade, Serbia. This horrible incident occurred on May 3rd, 2023 at around 8.30 a.m. Witnesses stated that the attacker quickly took out a gun from his bag after entering the school premise. First, he killed the school security guard. Then next, he shot and killed three female hall monitors. He then moved in the direction of his own classroom after reloading his gun. When he got inside the classroom, the shooter chose the history teacher as his target before opening firing randomly on everyone else sitting there. This horrible incident took the lives of six additional people, five girls and one boy. After leaving the room, the attacker made his way to the courtyard, where he called the police at 8.42 a.m. It was revealed that he had a CZ-75 Shadow II and a Ruger 22 LR type pistol in his possession. In the end, the shooter turned himself into the police, who quickly took him into custody. Surprisingly, it was discovered that he was a male student in the seventh grade from the same school who was only 13 years old. The minor offender could not be charged with a crime under Serbian law because the minimum age for criminal culpability is 14. The most severe sanction available through the educational system would be moving the student to another institution. He was referred to the Center for Social Work. A total of 10 people died in this shooting, including a security guard and nine students. One student, unfortunately, passed away from their wounds on May 15, 
Five students and a teacher also got hurt during the attack. Following the school massacre, approximately 200 parents at the school voted in favor of suspending classes and ending the school year on May 3rd. Classes, however, resumed on May 22nd, and the government announced that the school year ends on June 6th. Notably, this horrific tragedy occurred just one day before another mass shooting in Serbia, provoking nationwide protests. Number 20. Confession unveils missing students' remains. 1999 was the year when Elizabeth Chow, a promising 19-year-old computer studies student, just vanished without a trace in West London. For 24 years, her family had endured the unbearable uncertainty of not knowing what had happened to their beloved daughter. I still look for Liz every day. It's really difficult for me. I miss her every day. I need to find out what happened to her. Pong, Chow's mother. But now, there may be a glimmer of hope for closure. Recently, an interview was conducted inside the prison of convicted serial killer Levi Belfield, a notorious former nightclub bouncer. He reportedly confessed to detectives that he had killed Elizabeth Chow and had hidden her body in Woodland. He also named a specific location in West London where he claimed to have hidden Chow's body. Belfield's confession came after he admitted to the murder of Lynn Russell and her daughter Megan. Elizabeth's family, desperate for answers, has long believed that the Metropolitan Police, the force responsible for her case, have not taken the case seriously due to her gender and race. On the other hand, Belfield solicitor Teresa Clark stated that her client wished for the Chow family to recover after years of pain and uncertainty. He wants to see justice served because it is unfair for the family to have endured suffering for so long, Teresa Clark. Police said the area Belfield mentioned was too vast to dig straight away. However, Chow's family undoubtedly refused to admit this conclusion. The family stated that they had completely lost trust in the police as they acted carelessly and slowly. According to them, their case is not being prioritized. In a shocking interview, Belfield also reportedly confessed to the attack on Sarah Spurl and several other attempted murders and assaults. Remarkably, Belfield was named as a suspect in the case as early as 2008. However, it wasn't until recently that his involvement came to light. We hope that police decide to dig and search for Elizabeth Chow's remains so that the pain and anguish endured by her family may find some sort of solace.